Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This presentation is about flip chip process and its importance in advanced packaging of semiconductor devices. The semiconductor industry is continuing to grow rapidly. The chip war between the US and China has triggered a significant change in the industry's landscape. Currently shifting new and advanced waiver paths to US and Europe to make more chips and chips won't be useful unless they are packaged. So the advanced packaging industry is expanding as well. Okay guys, let's start learning. Flip chip is a popular interconnect process technology wherein the die is mounted face down onto the substrate. Using bumps instead of wires, Flip chip allows the shortest possible connection between the die and substrate pads that will yield to better overall device electrical performance. With flip chip technology, smaller device and package footprint is possible with maximum number of IOs. Most chips are designed for wire bonding process, which means the bond pads are positioned on the perimeter of the die closer to the leads to allow a proper wire bonding process with the shortest wire possible. When the same chips are used for flip chip configuration, the original bond pads has to be redistributed. The new pads are redistributed as evenly as possible on the top side of the chip, forming a cluster or array of pads for bumping process. This is done through the addition of a redistribution layer, or RDL. The RDL process involves adding one or two layers of metal and two or three layers of dielectric material, such as polyamide or BCB. The polyamide layer is added on top of the existing wafer passivation, and a layer of metal trace is added to reroute the bond pads. Another layer of polyamide is added to protect the metal trace but also exposing the new pads for bumping process. The new redistributed pads have a different structure than a typical aluminum bond pad for wire bonding. This structure of new pads is called underbump metallization or UBM. The new pads are for bumps that will provide the electrical connection between the die and the substrate. Flip chip reliability is anchored on the integrity of the solder joint between bump and UBM. A weak solder joint will ultimately result to device failure. The UBM structure has several layers and must be compatible with bumping technology. Typically, the first layer is on top and connected to the RDL metal. It is the adhesion layer and also acts as a barrier layer. The next layer is the wetting layer and finally the oxidation barrier layer. IBM developed the flip chip process in the 1960s. IBM bumping technology was popularly called C4 which stands for controlled collapse chip connection. C4 technology utilizes highlight solder bumps on pads of the chip and a matching wettable terminals on ceramic substrate. During the reflow process, the solder bumps will self-align to the substrate terminals. Unlike IBM highlight solder and high cost ceramic substrate, Sharp developed their own vapor bumping technology with thin lead solder and using standard FR4 substrate. The illustration on this slide shows the difference in UBM structures which were developed to match solder bump requirements. Integrated circuits have advanced significantly over the years. With silicon chips packed with more transistors for more advanced functionality, adding more I.O. terminals while at the same time reducing the chip size. 
This means the bumps has to be much smaller and closer to fit this smaller chip area. Supporting the advancement in silicon chips are new bumping technologies, such as lead-free solder bump for standard pitch of up to 100 microns. Micro-solder bump and copper pillar were also developed for much smaller fine pitch application. These bumping technologies are critical to development of advanced packaging that requires multi-chip solution in a single package. Flip chip on its own is very fragile mechanically. Also, the large thermal expansion mismatch between the silicon chip and PCB will lead to solar joint cracks, resulting to device failure. To improve flip chip reliability, the gaps between the chip and PCB are filled with epoxy resin. This is called as the underpill process. By filling the gaps, the thermal mismatch is reduced while it also mechanically stabilizes the die and solder bumps. Underfill process is about dispensing the epoxy resin and have that resin flow underneath the die and between bumps to fill all the gaps between the die and the substrate. The epoxy resin will flow naturally between the gaps through capillary action, but only if the substrate surface is clean. However, in most cases, the, sur the substrate surface is not clean, particularly after solder reflow process. Typically, the area surrounding the solder bumps and around the dye and passive components will have contamination due to flux residues. This contamination will prevent proper epoxy flow, resulting to non-wetting and voids, which will lead to device reliability issue. Most surface contamination on substrate are not visible by naked eye or even under microscope. You don't see it physically, but it is there on the surface. One way of checking is by contact angle measurement. A contaminated surface has low energy or it is hydrophobic. It doesn't allow the liquid to flow, which in the case of underfill process means the underfill epoxy will not flow properly between the solar bumps. A common method of cleaning the substrate surface in preparation for underfill process is plasma cleaning. Plasma cleaning uses gas such as oxygen and argon to remove organic contaminants. With the right gas mixture, it will remove organic contaminants and does not leave residue. It is also a green process, wherein gases used are non-toxic and has a harmless waste. After plasma cleaning process, the substrate surface has high energy and becomes hydrophilic, allowing underfill epoxy to flow properly around and between solar bumps. Ball grid array or BGA package is the most common package application of flip chip process. BGA package is best for integrated circuits with high number of IO terminals. BGA terminals can be configured in many different ways, from several rows of peripheral I.O. to full array configuration. BGA packages can use both wirebond and flip chip as interconnect processes. A wirebonded BGA is typically larger in size as a substrate wirebond pads are arranged outside of the die perimeter to accommodate the wirebonding process. With flip chip technology, the die is placed face down with die IO bumps directly on top of substrate pads, thus eliminating the extra space needed when doing the wire bonding process. Using flip chip technology, the IO density versus package area 
has increased significantly. Electrical performance of the package also improves with the shortest possible connection between the chip and substrate. The exposed die back side allows flexible thermal solutions and the thermal interface material to have direct contact with the die surface, thus improving the package thermal performance. System in package or SIP BGA package has a flip chip die and passive components mounted on the substrate. The flip chip die is underpilled and the die backside is exposed. This packaging option is generally for lower power applications, typically for less than 8 mm chip size. This is cost effective and has very good thermal performance which is good for thermally demanding small device applications. This packaging option is called Leadless BGA. Leadless BGA allows user to select the thermal interface material based on their requirements, and it is also applied after the solder reflow process. As mentioned earlier, Leadless BGA is ideal for 8 mm or smaller chips for low power application. However, more advanced chips are larger, and larger die sizes exhibit greater package warpage due to the difference in thermal expansion between silicon and laminate materials. As a result, Large die leadless BGA is more difficult to solder mount and may produce larger variations in bond line thickness between the die and external heatsink. To address the warpage issue, a stiffener ring around the periphery of the package substrate is added to provide structural rigidity. Another package option for flip chip technology is the leaded flip chip BGA package. It offers very good power and signal integrity and improved junction to board and junction to case thermal resistance as compared to wire bonded BGA package. The lead is generally constructed from a nickel plated copper material. With the leaded flip chip package, the die is thermally coupled to the lead using thermal interface material. This material ensures good coverage as well as good thermal conductivity to further improve the junction to case thermal performance and offers optimal thermal performance across wide range of applications. It must also be able to withstand the high temperatures of solder reflow. However, while it is optimal, it might not perfectly meet customer requirements for high power or high ambient applications. Flip chip is also widely used in multi-chip applications. A classic example is a wire bonded die on top of a flip chip in SIP package. In this option, a flip chip is mounted on an interposer substrate together with some passive components to form a sub-module package. Submodule is then mounted on another substrate with other components. After solder reflow, another die is mounted face up on top of the flip chip device, this time for wire bonding process. Flip chip is also the interconnect technology to make a multi chip module or what's commonly called as chiplet, wherein several ICs are mounted on the same substrate form a fully functional modular system. The substrate can be a multi-layer laminate substrate or a silicon interposer that is later mounted on another multi-layer substrate. That concludes another learning video in semiconductor packaging. Feel free to drop a comment, question, or email. To support this channel, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video. Thank you for watching.